Okay, so hello everybody. My name is Dan Lustig. I am the chair of the RISC-V Memory Consistency Model Task Group, which you've already heard a little bit about from some of the earlier talks already today. Um, my goal here in 15 minutes or so is obviously not going to be to walk through every detail of the memory model, but it's more just to give a status update of where we are, um, what we've accomplished over the past year or so since we originally formed, um, and to walk you through what's in the current specs since we're now up for ratification. So I'll talk about all of that um, as we go. So a brief recap for some of you who might have been around at some of the earlier workshops and uh, might have seen kind of how we got to this point. Um, so maybe a year or so ago, uh, a little earlier than that, uh, we, there were people in the community, uh, industry, academia, working together to realize that while the original memory model that was in the spec from uh, earlier than 2017. Um, there was nothing fundamentally wrong with it, but there were some important uh, subtle details that were uh, maybe not quite there yet in order to both catch up with the theory and the practice of how memory models are understood in some of the other popular ISAs out there um, and tooling to understand where exactly you need to insert fences, for example. Um, and then also just to make sure that RISC-V can be properly compatible with C++ and Java and Linux and all of the other important software that's obviously going to be key to making sure that the RISC-V ecosystem works properly. Right? So we came together. We decided to form a task group. We have brought in experts from industry and from academia. We had a pretty big group that spent uh, a lot of time working through all of the issues here. Um, so I guess a big chunk of the effort in the beginning was stepping back and taking a look at the memory model, uh, making sure, or even deciding from first principles whether it should be uh, a strong memory model, a weak memory model, something more researchy, right? There's no shortage of debate on what a uh, memory model should look like. Uh, there's strong advocates on all sides of the picture. Um, so we'd spent a lot of time going back and forth and all the alternatives there. Um, and then uh, for those of you who were at the most recent workshop last November, uh, you might recall that we announced kind of our high-level plans for what we decided to do with the memory model. So what we came up with was this RVWMO, RISC-V weak memory ordering, uh, basically taking the original memory model as it was uh, laid out in the original spec, but just filling in some of the details, making sure it's com <coughs> excuse me, uh, compliant with all the packages uh, that I talked about. Um, and then we also had a uh, RISC-V uh, TSO, total store ordering, um, as another alternative, right? So in keeping with the theme uh, that we've heard already a little bit about, that we want RISC-V to be uh, not necessarily choosing one particular class of design for everybody, but giving people options, um, we, ha we laid out those two options. RISC-V uh, weak memory ordering is the baseline. RVTSO is now a separate extension with a name. So it's standardized for those of you who might want it. But the default, all the software, uh, all the compiler tool chains, and so on are all going to be converging around RVWMO as this baseline. OK, um, so that's where we were last workshop. And then uh, since then, for the past six months or so, we've been really working to fill in the details of RVWMO and RVTSO. And so that's where we are today. Um, those of you who follow ISA Dev might have noticed that last week, we actually released uh, all of the uh, progress that we've made uh, as an upstream, uh, we've upstreamed it into the spec. We've now released it for the 45 day ratification process laid out by the foundation. Um, so that will run from last week until June 16 or so, depending on what kinds of feedback we get. Um, so if you haven't taken a look at the memory model yet, um, you can look at what I'm presenting here. I gave a tutorial of about half hour or so yesterday, so those slides will be available, and the video, I guess, should be available at some point. Um, and then there's also a lot of information that we put into this spec. There's uh, three different formalizations. There's a natural language that goes into the spec itself. Uh, there's a link to a bunch of different tools that are online, so you can play with it. Um, and then there's a huge appendix that has lots of uh, more easily accessible explanation for all of the intuition for what's going on in there. So it's all available. Um, hopefully it helps. But if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're here to answer questions. But like I said, the ratification process has started. So now is the time to look at it. Because at some point in the near future, we're going to get this ratified so that everybody can rely on it and we can move on and develop software around it and so on, build hardware that we can rely on. OK. So that was the timeline. Uh, now let me remind everybody what our goals were. Obviously, to, uh, our goal is to define the RISC-V memory consistency model. Uh, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It can mean instruction reordering or reordering in memory or what fences you have, where you put in the fences, and so on. 
But ultimately, at the end of the day, the goal of a memory model is to define the values that can be returned, of loads, uh, returned by loads of memory. Right? All of the other aspects that I talked about, ordering and fences or so on, are just different ways to constrain and then properly define what values can be returned by loads. So ultimately, that's the question. And um, as I already touched on, we want to support a wide range of implementations in hardware or in emulation, if that's what you're looking for, and then support all the other software um, that is going to be built on top. And there's a lot of subtlety that goes into there. There's a lot of uh, complicated details. Um, so we, we've done our best. We've put in a huge amount of effort with all the experts that we could bring in uh, to make that all work. So as it's currently laid out, this is um, how we've now written it down into the spec. Um, so if you look online on the upstream RISC-V ISA manual GitHub repo, you'll see it. Um, we currently have these uh, chapters and appendices laid out. So there's uh, the base memory model RVWMO is laid out in what's a new chapter 6. Um, so you can read the specification there. Um, we separated out two new extensions. So ZTSO I talked about. I talked about it as RVTSO. ZTSO is the name of the actual extension itself. Um, kind of a, in some weird way, it's a subset of uh, T, which originally means transactional memory. We're now using it for other types of memory as well, um, or other types of memory-related extensions. Um, ZAM for misaligned atomics. I'll come back to a little bit toward, uh, later towards the end of the talk. And then, as I mentioned, we have these appendices, uh, the natural language explanation um, of everything that, uh, everything that I will be talking about, all the details of the model, why we have them, what they're used for, and then various uh, formalizations. Um, you heard a little bit from Nikhil in the previous talk about how um, it works for the broader ISA. This is a memory model-specific set of formalizations. And then, obviously, we're going to all work together to make sure it all uh, becomes unified into one formal spec uh, at some point along the way. OK, so in a nutshell, um, I'm going very quickly through this. So like I said, I'm happy to take questions either here at the workshop or offline afterwards. Um, but I have two slides on what is in the memory model. So first of all, there's a uh, set of rules. Uh, so there's a global memory order, a total order on all the memory operations in your program. Um, that global order uh, respects some subset of program order, but not all of program order, meaning some, if you want to think of it in the way that some instructions can be reordered. And obviously, we called it weak memory ordering. So there's a lot of reorderings that are possible. Um, so if I go left to right here kind of quickly, on the left-hand side, we have uh, the same address ordering rules. So uh, load to store ordering, load to load ordering are maintained if it's the same address. Load to load ordering of the same address is maintained with some of the caveats there. Um, I'm not going to go into those details in the talk, but you can look them up afterwards or ask me questions. Um, there's a rule about not forwarding, uh, at least in a non-speculative way, from uh, atomics or store conditional into a subsequent load to the same address just to make synchronization work a little bit better, make sure we're compatible with all the synchronization in higher level languages. Um, there's a fence that obviously um, is in there. It would behave more or less the way you would expect to, uh, the way it's been defined all along. Uh, we have release consistency, so acquire and release bits. Uh, we also have, in particular, the uh, this is actually, I think, one change that we might have clarified since the last workshop, um, that we have the RCSC, the sequentially consistent synchronization variables uh, version of release consistency. So that means uh, acquire ordering is a one-way fence in one direction. Release ordering is a one-way fence in the other direction. And then release followed by an acquire is also ordered. Um, pretty standard stuff there, but there are many different variants of release consistency, so we did uh, converge on that. Um, there's a rule about ordering a load reserved with a subsequent paired store conditional. Um, one of the big missing features in the original spec that we did make sure to add is uh, syntactic address control and data dependencies, where if you have, say, a value that you, do, you load it from memory, you do some uh, arithmetic on it, and then you use it as either the address or data value of a subsequent memory operation, or you feed it into a branch that determines whether another memory uh, operation is going to get executed or not. Um, these are features that are used as a somewhat lightweight form of synchronization in different memory models. Um, and so this is a standard thing that we wanted to make sure we got included, again, for the sake of compatibility. Um, and then there's a couple of other more subtle rules that I'm not going to get into for this talk. Um, they may look familiar if you're familiar with memory models. Um, but I'm going to skip right past it here. OK, and then we have a load value axiom that, in brief, says that loads return either the latest value um, in the global memory order from the same address, or from a, the store to the same address, 
or they also look back in program order and see if there's a more recent value um, in program order. You can think of that as forwarding from a heart private store buffer if you want to. Um, relatively standard definition there. Uh, we have an atomicity axiom that essentially says there can be, if you have a paired load reserve and store conditional, if you have the reservation, then if it's successful, um, there cannot be another store from another heart in between the load and reserved and the store conditional in that global memory order that I mentioned. Um, again, as you would expect to happen. Um, and then there's a progress axiom that, for theoretical reasons, says that there cannot be an uh, infinite sequence of other memory operations between, uh, before any one given memory operation. Um, that one, in case you're curious, is explicitly not meant to be any notion, or not meant to provide any notion of fairness or any notion of forward progress or quality of service or anything like that. It's just strictly for memory model reasons. It's not at all meant to say anything stronger than that. Um, but we did need to put it in there just for the sake of uh, formalization efforts. Um, OK, so I mentioned uh, the extensions that we have. ZS uh, ZTSO I talked about already. Um, but I'll elaborate just a little bit here, uh, starting at the bottom, I guess, that um, if you remember from the previous workshop, we talked about this also, that uh, we have ZTSO. There is an extension available for people that want to use it. Um, there was enough demand for people, say, porting code from x86 that wanted to not have to worry so much about memory model issues. And again, we chose not to, uh, we chose not to impose either of the memory models one way or the other, so we have it as an option. But be aware that if you use this, that TSO-only code is not compatible with RVWMO, which is going to, we expect it to be the uh, larger portion of the hardware that's out there. So RVWMO code is going to be portable across all these implementations. The standard software tool chains, as I mentioned, are going to support RVWMO. But TSO support is there if you want to define it in a standardized way. Um, coming back up to the top here with ZAM, uh, so if those of you who have followed along the details of how atomics work in the spec uh, may have noticed that at one point there was an addition of um, misaligned atomics and some limited support uh, for what that means. And it's a limited form of atomicity. It's designed to be uh, somewhat easily emulatable if you have an implementation that, for which the hardware does not naturally provide uh, atomicity for misaligned atomics. It gives you a way to emulate it. Um, it was in line. We now pulled it out into a separate uh, subset of the A extension called ZAM. Again, so it's uh, queryable. You can look up in some way whether your hardware actually has support for this, um, just to make it a little bit easier for platforms to converge around this, rather than having it be uh, defined in line. So those are the two extensions we have. There's, uh, the definitions of these are not too long, so you can take a look at those and see what you think. Um, but this also means, um, for what it's worth, that the A extension without ZAM does not uh, support misaligned AMOs or LRSC pairs. OK, so as I mentioned, uh, we have these appendices. Um, they also link to a bunch of online resources where we have uh, more than 7,000 litmus tests. These are a standard uh, tool for testing uh, memory models. Um, we have online tools. Here's a, a screenshot of the operational model framework uh, from the University of Cambridge. Uh, there's a herd formalization. There's an alloy formalization. There's all kinds of resources out there to help people um, uh, use, uh, understand what's going on, first of all, and then apply it to testing, making sure your hardware is compliant. We're going to work with the compliance testing group at some point to make sure, uh, to do our best, I guess, uh, to port these uh, litmus tests that we have into the compliance testing framework. Uh, so we can also use that for uh, testing compliance. Um, there's a bunch of ongoing and future work. Obviously, you heard some about uh, in the previous talk what uh, is going on for formalization uh, in general, but there's uh, a lot of other pieces that even within the memory model we haven't necessarily gotten to yet. Right? So there's some hope to formalize things like uh, fence.i and sfence.vma, uh, exactly what that means. Uh, obviously, we want to integrate with all the other extensions that are coming online. Um, there's things like cache flush, cache writeback instructions. Um, these things are uh, future extensions that we intentionally chose not to try to address in this uh, current ratification process. We wanted to converge around what was in that current memory model spec um, without getting bogged down in an indefinite amount of future details. Uh, so those are still uh, to be determined, I guess. Um, so the ratification is specifically focused on uh, the other pieces of the memory model that I talked about. And we'll work out the logistics for what's going to happen there as we move forward. And with that, I'll finish up and just uh, leave a reminder here. Uh, this is the ratification timeline, so please do take a look. And uh, if you have questions or comments or feedback, uh, there's multiple ways to uh, pass that along to us. 
Uh, so please take a look and please do that. Thank you.